Hey there ghouls and creeps, I'm Britt and welcome to my channel where we do spooky DIY home and lifestyle content all year long. Today we're going to be flipping my childhood nightstand to something that's both whimsical and spooky. <laughs> As you can see, I have just a few stickers to remove off the drawer fronts. And there's also quite a few on the right side that I'll need to remove as well. And then like also give the whole thing a really big deep clean before getting into filling in all the imperfections like the little teeth marks and scratches that are frankly all over. And then we'll be able to sand and get into painting. I'll also need to remove everything from inside the drawers and clear off the top to be able to get it away from the wall and also take it outside for painting. My overall plan for the flip is to paint the whole thing black and then use some peel and stick wallpaper that I bought from Spoonflower for the drawer fronts to break up the black paint. Let's get into sticker removal and cleaning everything off. As I remove these stickers I thought it would be fun to elaborate on some for general entertainment as well as supply some food and artist recommendations mostly specific to the Seattle, Portland, Oregon areas. When you come out to Seattle, Washington, make sure to stop by Monster Art and Clothing in the Ballard neighborhood just north of downtown. They have tons of fantastic art, clothing, and other decor created by local makers. Ten Hundred is a super talented artist and YouTuber who paints murals all over the world, as well as creates amazing merch with his art ranging from t-shirts, prints, puzzles, and stickers. You can find his channel through the link in the description. If you're curious who the Sick Boys are, they were my uncle's social distortion cover band from years ago. I think I was in middle school or early high school at the time. And instead of handing all these stickers out to friends to promote the band, I stuck them all to this drawer front. One thing that Portland, Oregon has a surplus of is donut shops. Everyone has their preferences on who is the best. And contrary to what you may be thinking mine is, looking at the side of my nightstand, my go-to shop is Blue Star Donuts. Local Portlanders, let me know in the comments which donut place is your favorite. I then used rubbing alcohol to break down the remaining sticker adhesive and then used a surface cleaner to get as much of the dust and dirt off as I could.
After clearing all the items from my nightstand that weren't plugged in, I began creating a makeshift nightstand to serve as a stand-in for the next couple days. Zinnia was very helpful, serving the project's progress and executing her responsibilities as project manager. Getting the nightstand as clean as I thought I could get it, I took wood filler and filled in the teeth marks on the nightstand's corners, as well as the deep scratches on all the surfaces. To sand off the excess wood filler and remove some of the stain, I first used a 220 grit sandpaper and then went in with a 120 grit sandpaper to make all the surfaces smooth. I want to take a moment to thank my dad for giving me advice and pointers for this project. This is my first attempt at refinishing a piece of furniture, so naturally I had a fair amount of questions about the process and the materials. So thank you dad so much for your expertise and your help. You made this project a whole lot more approachable and far less daunting. To get even coverage, I ended up applying three coats of paint and then applied two coats of clear seal spray paint. I cut my peel and stick wallpaper to two pieces measuring seven and a half inches by 21 and a half inches, making sure to match the wallpaper print where the drawers meet in the center. I'll be sure to include a link in the description below for the wallpaper.
I'm absolutely in love with how this turned out and now I'm looking around at some of my other furniture pieces imagining all the different flip possibilities. Now that I know how accessible furniture refinishing can be, I'm now more comfortable and confident with taking on more challenging projects in the future. Let me know in the comments if this video gave you the confidence to take on your first furniture flip project and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more spooky DIYs and furniture flips like this one. Thank you so much for visiting my creepy craft corner of the internet and taking the time to watch. Now without further ado, let's get to the grand reveal. 